Hello, my name is Kevin Benedict. I'm a senior analyst for the Center for the Future of Work here at Cognizant, and I want to thank you for joining us today. This is part of a series of interviews we do called the Mobile Expert Interview Series. And I'm just thrilled today to have the CEO of Apurian joining us today. His name is Brian Day. Brian, thanks for joining us. Kevin, I'm thrilled to be with you today. So thanks for the invite. I appreciate it. So uh, it's 8 a.m. here in beautiful, sunny Boise, Idaho. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm in not so beautiful today, Boston, Massachusetts. But I will say it has been beautiful. So uh, good, good morning to you. All right. Many of my colleagues are located there in Boston. Matter of fact, I get out there uh, uh, regularly and enjoy it a lot. Okay. So, Brian, you guys had a new announcement this week, and that announcement is of a close of a Series C investment in Apurian. Now, I look here. It's first floor. Was it first floor capital? They're willing to put twelve million dollars into Apurian. What are they seeing in Apurian that makes them willing to take that kind of risk? Well, first of all, I think it's important to note that uh, First Floor was one of the investors in the round. They were the new investor that came in. All of our existing investors, which includes Kleiner Perkins, Bessemer, Northbridge, Intel Capital, and then the original investment group that, that spans back to 2009, Boston Common Angels, also invested in this round for their pro rata share. So, so first floor didn't put $12 million at risk, but ah. a smaller amount of risk. But that said, our investors obviously looked at the company and said, hey, this is something we want to put $12 million into total. Um, and, and I think it's a reflection of what's happened in the market. Uh, we've seen great take up uh, in demand for, the, for our platform in the past 12 to 18 months. And a lot of this has been caused by what I call you know, enterprises with a progressive mobile mentality that are starting to reach out to us now and say, look, you know, we're not, we're not necessarily defensive anymore about mobility. We're actually looking to use it as an offensive tool. And in many cases, what they do is they say, we're not just looking to push apps out to employees, but to people that, in what we call the extended enterprise, which is contractors, dealers, franchisees, people like that, that, that for, for whatever reason, either don't want to have an MDM profile on their device, or they can't have an MDM profile on the device. And that's the market where we tend to shine. We've seen a lot of traction in the past uh, year to year and a half. So Brian, for those that may not be intimately familiar with Apurian, you guys uh, used to kind of have as a tagline mobile application management. Uh, let's first of all talk about what that means in your world, because I know that uh, in you know, Cimarron and I, we meet at mobile conferences at all corners of the globe. Uh, we're like best friends. We see each other everywhere, under palm trees, fir trees, you name it. Um, so tell me, what does mobile app management mean, and how is that different from some of the other related categories of enterprise mobility? Sure, Kevin. I think you said we used to be mobile application management. We actually still are. Um, we think that def we define mobile application management as, as everything that we do as a company, which is, I know it's a convenient definition, but it starts with the actual procurement of the app, and it, it goes to the entire app lifecycle management process, all the way to the, the inevitable retirement of the app at some point in the future. Um, and what's happened to our platform over the years is that we started as essentially an enterprise app store, and we've added features and functionalities to that platform over the past three to four years. And some of those features are things like app wrapping, which is where the security messaging comes from, and that's something that I think our customers actually like a lot. We do app inspection. Um, we obviously do a very good job at app deployment, which is something that I think we're known for. Um, we've got many accounts that have 20, 30, 40,000 users on our, on our platform, and one customer that's talked to us about going up to 100,000 users at some point in time in the future. So in order to handle that kind of volume, you've got to have a really robust platform. And, and when we get back, to, going back to the app management, that's, what we, that's where we come from. We're all about managing the application, managing the administrator's experience and helping the enterprises manage their applications, and ultimately the end user's use of those applications. So we're different from mobile device management in that we do not manage the end user device. We manage the apps and the data on those apps, and I think that's an important uh, distinguishing characteristic. Got it. And Brian, I see here over the last year, you've added to your tagline and security. So mobile app management and security. What's your thinking there? 
Uh, we think that security is obviously a big part of app management. If you can't secure the app, then you're not really managing the app. So our platform comes with uh, about a dozen uh, pre-built uh, dynamic policies that we have written right into it. And our customers can choose from, you know, they can, they can enable all 12 of those policies or they can enable zero of those policies. Through the use of open APIs, we have customers actually writing their own policies as well. And as we get into larger and larger enterprises, it's invariable that they, 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 they took a look at the 12 policies that we offer and they say, okay, that's great. We want five other policies over here handling something a little different. So we've got a team that helps them build those policies out. In the future at some point in time, I suspect these enterprises will have the resources in-house to be able to do that work themselves. Um, but again, it all comes back to the, the enterprises want to protect the apps and make sure that, that, that for whatever reason that that app somehow isn't uh, isn't uh, compromised and, and have have the data in that app falling into the wrong hands. Got it. So Brian, is, is every time I've talked to appearing in the past and, and kind of got a briefing from your team, it always seemed in the back of my mind, it always seemed that uh, it will become easier for you guys to explain your business value as uh, more mobility is adopted within the enterprise. If they're just getting started, they hear your guys' sales presentation, they say, maybe someday I'll need that. Today I'm just dealing with two apps. I can handle it with a spreadsheet or my developers. But is that what you're seeing as well as adoption increases, then your business value increases as well? Yes, Kevin, it's actually a lot easier to explain what it is that we do now than it was even you know two years ago. Um, you know, I like to joke that you know two years ago I'd go home from work and if my wife and my kids asked me what my company did, I'd say, okay, sit down and I'll if you have five minutes, I'll explain what it is that we do. We've boiled that down into six words at this point in time, which is which is secure any app, reach every user. Um, and we think if you if you just think through what that says is that that, that kind of defines what our value proposition is. We can secure the apps that the enterprises need to get out to their users, and we can reach every single user. So not just employees, but employees with BYOD, which is the bring your own device uh, part of the enterprise to, for those that choose to have that. Um, it's contractors, it's dealers, it's franchisees. Um, so we can reach every user that an enterprise wants to to be able to reach with the apps those enterprise want the enterprises want to push out to those end users. Wow. So um, it seems to me that um, security is always on the front page. Can you talk to me about kind of what you guys are offering from a mobile security perspective? And I know you guys have had a lot of partners within the mobile security field before. How are you? Are you finding yourself cooperating in those areas or you're starting to compete more with some of those traditional partners of yours? Uh, how's that going? Yeah, no, we're not co we're not competing with our partners. I would I would never want to compete with a partner. I think that's probably a, a dangerous game to play. Um, and, and I've actually asked that question a lot. So it's it's it's, it's actually a really good question, Kevin. Um, you know, as you know, uh, probably know, Mokana is a partner of ours, and they have been for some time. So when I talked earlier about the the dynamic policies that we have prepackaged in, in our in our Ease platform, uh, a few of those policies come from Mokana. Um, we buy from Okana or we license from Okana some of their FIPS uh, encryption, uh, which is a policy that when we, when we have deals with the, the U.S. Uh, the federal government that they generally want. Um, a lot of enterprises don't want that, so it's not a policy that we enable all the time, but, but, but it's not something we're going to invent on or develop on our own either. Um, I would rather partner in something like that, and uh, Okana has been a great partner for us. We also partner with a company called, excuse me one second. Can you still see me? Yeah, I see you fine. Something okay. might have popped up, but you're still clear here, no problem. Yeah, I'm not sure how to get you back, but if you can see me fine, I guess we're, yeah. I guess we're okay here. Um, we also partner with a company called AppThority, who helps us with some of the app inspection, and a number of our customers want that as well. And essentially what that, what that does is it allows an enterprise to, to really inspect the app before they deploy it. And you'd be surprised, uh, a lot of these large enterprises, given time constraints, they'll build an app and, and they'll, they'll be trying to push it out to their end user customer or their end user. Um, and they'll realize at the last minute, hey, you know what? There's still some, some test scripts active in that code. There are some things in it that we really don't want to have. So by using a, 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 the technology from a partner such as AppThority, we're able to catch that and, and help our, help our uh, end user customers as well there. Got it. You know, I, I think uh, people have been in enterprise have been so focused on building new apps 
that they haven't realized that a lot of apps that they will be building and deploying are kind of disposable apps. They end up throwing them away and replacing them as they learn and as their strategies change. And I think that's one of those areas that you guys address that so many people don't think about until they start throwing away some of their apps, that you need to close those holes in your firewall. Is that something you're seeing as well? Yes, it is. And it's, it's again, it, it's, it comes back to the point that we're, we're the fact that we're all about apps. So when I talked about the app lifecycle management, uh, you think about what that really means. App lifecycle means there's a beginning and an end. And we think that's really important because you're absolutely right. What you don't want to have is a bunch of apps out there that, that people just forget about. And, and, and six years from now, there's some confidential data that's leaking out because of the fact they never properly retired that app. So, so when you when you look at our platform, uh, when you look at the, when you look at the user console of our platform, it's very friendly. It's easy to work with. We think we've got the best UX in the, in the business right now. And you know the end user administrators uh, take a look at that and say, okay, here are the apps I'm deploying to this particular user. So it's not just a a user based platform; it's also an app based platform. So they know exactly who has which apps and who's using those apps. And, and at the point in time when they want to retire those apps, it's easy for them to do that as well. Uh, very good. And so uh, over the last six weeks, and actually probably a couple of years, but especially over the last six, six weeks. I just keep hearing about some uh, big changes within the enterprise mobility market with SAP's change of strategy around enterprise mobility uh, to some of the vendors like Kitizen um, just closing the shop. So where do you see enterprise mobility going over the next 24 months and evolving in that direction? Well, you know, you're, you're, it's, a, it's a great point you're making. I mean, it's, it's amazing how fast this business changes. Um, I was talking to somebody just yesterday, and they were asking me, "What's what's what? What do you see different today from what you saw a year ago?" And you know, it, it's probably not a year ago, but if I go back 15 months ago, I think this kind of addresses one of your earlier questions, Kevin. Um, what are, what do our customers think of us when they first talk to us? You know, 15 to 18 months ago, it was a real. We, we were evangelizing. Um, if you if you talked to one of my sales guys and said, "Hey, you know, tell me about a sales call you might have made in in, in January of 2014." The answer would be, well, you know, I'm going out there and explaining what it is that we do, and I'm getting kind of a, a blank look at times from people like, oh, we never thought about that. We, 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 we know all about MDM. Um, we, we, we've bought MDM. We've tried MDM. It works well for certain situations. We've heard about you guys. Can you explain better what it is that you do? Um, now that doesn't, that's not the case anymore. When, 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 when prospects call us or we reach out to them, they totally understand what it is they do. They totally understand why we're a little different and why we, why we address a different niche in the market from, from the MDM guys. That said, I think we've got to continue to run really fast because this market is changing really quickly, as, as you just pointed out. Um, the names that were hot names six months ago in some cases are not even in the business anymore. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we're not going to sit here and take the money we just raised and say, great, we're going to get fat, dumb, and happy and just continue to sell what we've got. We've got to continue to push the boundaries to be, to be effective in this market. And in the long run, you know, I don't think that a mobile device is going to be any different than a desktop device, right? I think we, we've got to be a little careful that we just don't assume that, hey, mobility is always going to be its own little market. It's probably not. Uh, you know, it's, it, I mean, things change. People aren't going to want to have one vendor for mobility one vendor for desktop support, one vendor for Internet of Things. It, they're just not going to want to do that. It's all going to be one at some point in time in the future. But, you know, for now, yeah. we want to be the best in the mobile space. Got it. So uh, you brought up uh, the Internet of Things there. Is there a play for a period within the Internet of Things? Oh, I think there probably is. If you really think about it, you know, the endpoints, I mean, they're, they're all endpoints, right? I mean, I've got my, my, my iPhone here, um, you know, hope, hopefully someday when I don't have to buy my kids a new phone, I'll actually get an, I, an iPhone 6 um, instead, of my, instead of the little guy I've got right here. But at the end of the day, this is just an endpoint. Um, in, 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 if you think of IoT, they're all just different endpoints. So, so they, they, they're not necessarily going to have uh, you know, iOS or Android running on them. They're going to have some type of operating system. But they're still going to need some kind of infrastructure to help people communicate. So at the end of the day, I think we will probably – um, migrate uh, down that road, and, and we're already thinking about that at this point in time, because I think that's probably the future. Got it. One last question, then we'll wrap this up, Brian. What are, you know, let's say, what are the two questions that enterprises still aren't asking that they should be asking when they meet with you guys? That's a good one. Um, I would say one of those questions that they aren't asking that I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm surprised at is, 
is can you help us with the deployment process? Um, you know, I'm, I continue to be amazed, and, and, and if you look at our customer list right now, we've got you know several of the Fortune 500 uh, businesses uh, as customers, and as you can imagine, uh, getting through their procurement process is tough. It's a several month process. They've got they've got security teams looking at our platform. They've got procurement officers we're working with. It's really difficult to get through, and once you get through it and, the, and get the contract signed. There's, in a lot of cases, there's not much on the other side. They haven't really thought anywhere near as much about the deployment of, 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 uh, of, of apps out to users as they have about buying the platform to use to, to, get, to deploy those apps out to the end users. So, so I'm more surprised that they don't come to us and say, hey, look, help, help us with the deployment. So we're actually proactively reaching out. We formed a customer success team this year. Um, and that customer success team goes out every time we sign a new deal, they're involved right from day one saying, okay, we understand best practices. We understand how to effectively deploy apps to as many users as you want to. And we also know how to avoid the mistakes that other, other companies have made. You know, they're, they're, it, you'd be amazed at how, how primitive some of the processes are that these people follow. We know the best practices at this point in time. We think we're well positioned to take advantage of that and, and help our customers. And at the end of the day, if our customers are successful in rolling apps out to, to multiple thousands of users, we're going to be more successful as well. Got it. Is there a second one you want to add to that? Oh, I think the second one would probably be, um, you know, something along the lines of, you know, let's talk about let's talk about security. What kind of other security policies can you think about? I mean, one of the things that I'm doing right now, um, and I'm glad we're having this meeting today because I'm actually hitting the road on Monday and I'll be out on the road for the next couple of weeks. I'm visiting with a lot of our customers, and one, one of the things that I have a list of questions I want to ask them, and one of those questions is, hey, what's the next thing you're, you're worried about from a, from, a, from a mobility standpoint, and, yeah. and how can we help you on the security side? Because, you know, we continue to hear people, is, people don't just talk about security, they worry about security, um, and, and it's, it's, it's a fact of life, and I think that's one of the areas that when we raised our $12 million earlier this week, you know, a lot some of that money is earmarked to to, 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 to building more and more security policies in the platform because we think it's going to be important going forward. And that's what I hear from a lot of our customers. I expect to hear a lot more of that in the next couple of weeks. Um, but that's one of the things I'm going to, if they don't bring it up, I'll bring it up because I think it's going to be an important thing. And we, and if I can help save somebody from some kind of an embarrassing security leak, you're good for us. All right, Brian, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and with sharing with all of us uh, the success that you're experiencing there at the period. Thank you, Kevin. It's been great talking to you. Thank you. Enjoy the day in Idaho.